All right. Well, it's uh, it's a couple minutes after uh, one o'clock, so uh, we'll get started. Uh, welcome to Cunninger Presents. Uh, we're definitely happy you could join us today. Uh, today, our subject is going to be uh, Parker Hose Crimper Training. Uh, during these times of COVID, we haven't been able to get out as much as we'd like to do this kind of stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna do this one today online here with a webinar. All right, so today uh, we're going to start out with a, a little introduction, uh, go through some materials and links that I've got in. We'll uh, talk about how we're going to do deal with questions, and then uh, we're going to have a quiz today. So uh, I'm Joe Alberts. I'm an account manager here at Cundinger, and uh, I'll be joined today uh, for the live demo that we're going to do uh, by Paul Cundinger. He's uh, president of Cundinger here, so uh, he'll be helping me out. Uh, as far as the housekeeping items, um, I've got uh, a material section off in your uh, control box off to the side, and in that section I've got quite a few uh, different links and a PDF. Uh, a lot of that stuff's going to be uh, very useful for uh, today as well as uh, in the future for, for crimping hoses. So you may want to uh, click on that stuff and get it downloaded and get it, uh, get it uh, in a spot where you can uh, easily find it. Um, and then uh, for questions, uh, if you could just uh, kind of type your questions into the chat box there. And uh, when we get to a good spot, uh, maybe right before our live demo, we'll try to answer what we've got out there. Uh, and then maybe even after the live demo, we'll do, do some more question uh, answer sessions. So uh, if you could uh, type your questions into the chat box, that'd be great. Uh, and then at the end today, we'll be doing a quick little quiz. Uh, I think there were some testing requirements out there for some training for some of the the customers, so uh, we've added a little quiz to fulfill that uh, that requirement. So first, we're going to start off talking about uh, Parker Hose. Um, actually, before we get started with that, um, I do have a poll I'd like to uh, to administer, just so we know who we're. Uh, who we're kind of talking to and what your experience is uh, uh, with uh, Parker Hose crimpers and that kind of stuff. So uh, let me uh, get this up here. So the first poll question. I'm trying to figure out how to launch. All right, I'll give it another couple seconds here. All right, we'll close that. Perfect. All right, everyone can see my screen, so uh, let's get started with the uh, Parker hose here. All right. So when you're considering a crimper, um, obviously you got to kind of start with what hose you're going to be using, what hose you need. Uh, so we're going to spend a little time talking about uh, Parker hose and 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 how to select it, um, and what to what to use. Uh, Parker hose is sized in a one sixteenth inch scale, so each sixteenth equals a, a number one. So if you've got a three sixteenths inch hose, you've got a, a number three hose. Uh, if you've got a half inch hose, which is uh, uh, eight sixteenths, you're going to have a number eight hose, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Hydraulic and industrial hose is also sized mainly by uh, inside diameter. So if we talk about a half inch hose, we're talking about the inside diameter. Uh, so a number eight hose would have a half inch ID. Um, you need to kind of identify the hose you're gonna use uh, uh, for your applications before we can identify what crimper you're gonna be using. So um, we, we need to, you know, Pay attention to your your application and and the environment and all that kind of stuff before you select your hose. Parker uses a a system called Stamp to uh, determine you know how how to identify the hose you're going to be using, uh, the uh, size of the hose you need, the temperature of of the application, uh, and and the uh, and the material that you're you're going to be trans transporting through the hose. Uh, the application that it's in, uh, the media that you're using, and, and the pressure that you need are all uh, important factors uh, in selecting your hose. Um, Parker offers many different hose options made of different, different materials, so there's some uh, different uh, options out there available. Uh, hydraulically, typically we see rubber hose used, but there are some uh, options in the thermoplastics arena. Uh, rubber is widely used, in, uh, especially in the hydraulics, and offers probably the most uh, broad selection of fittings when it, com when it comes to the hose. Um, we also, uh, there are some other options out there, but those are the two main ones when, when we're talking about the hose. Uh, we also classify them into two categories. Uh, we've got uh, hydraulic hose, which is typically moving work or, or creating pressure to move work. Uh, and then we've got industrial hose, and that's basically used to move a material, whether it's water, air, chemical, fuel, uh, many different options. Typically in these hoses, pressure, pressure is not as important, although it can be. Uh, it's, you know, is the hose compatible with the, the material that you're, you're moving? In the material section of the catalog or of the, uh, the box there, I have included links to the hydraulic hose catalog. It's called our hose products catalog. I've included the link to the uh, Parflex catalog. That's going to be our thermoplastics catalog. And then I've also got a link in there for the industrial hose catalog. And that's going to be for the items that you may need uh, for, for moving materials, water, air, chemical, and fuels and others. So uh, those are there for your use. So let's first talk a little bit about some hydraulic hose. Uh, typically, you're going to see this in, in a rubber compound type hose. Um, again, there are some Parflex uh, options for this, some more plastic options for, for hydraulic hose. Uh, this is your catalog 4400. Again, the link is in the materials section. Um, the catalog itself has a lot of info on the crimpers, the dyes, the hoses. Uh, it's basically going to be your go-to if you're using a hydraulic hose of, of how to uh, pick out your sizes, pick out your fittings, uh, identify the crimper you need, uh, and, and all of that kind of stuff that uh, you're going to be looking for to identify the, you know, the, the crimper that you're going to be using. So let's talk about the Parker uh, fitting numbering system. Um, once you understand this system, it's, it's pretty easy to identify the fittings you need. Typically, all Parker crimp hose ends will have a part number stamped or lasered onto the fitting. Uh, and usually you can f identify where that part number starts with. There's going to be a Parker P stamped in there. Uh, and the part number will start after that. All crimp fittings start with the number one. So that's a very important thing you need to, to remember when you're crimping a hose is, is your fitting needs to start with a part number of one. If it does not, it's not a crimp fitting and you should not be crimping it onto the hose. Uh, so needs to start with a number one. Um, you know, there's, there's other options out there for field attachable, but all the crimp fittings are going to start with a number one. The next two numbers uh, are based in the in the part number are your uh, end connection. So this is referring to whether it's a female seal lock, swivel, straight, elbow, those kind of things. So it's identifying what that end connection looks like. Um, you know, you may have an NPT male rigid straight. That's going to be a, I think that's an O1 uh, in the part number. Uh, the next two numbers after those two are your series of fittings. 
this is important to know since the hose you select will use a specific series of a fitting. So, for example, if you're using a 387 Parker hydraulic hose, you're going to be using 43 series fittings, and you want to see that 43 in the part number uh, of the fitting. The last two numbers are the size of the uh, connection and then the size of the hose. So a number 8-8 is going to be a half-inch connection size to a half-inch hose. Uh, number 12 would be three quarters uh, to a, a, a half inch hose. And then there are some suffixes that uh, will follow. Um, uh, you know, if you see a, a, a B, it'll be brass, C will be stainless steel, so on and so forth. If there's nothing there, it's going to be a standard steel fitting. So as I said on the last slide, it's important to know the series of fittings that you need. The hose you select for your application will determine what series fitting you need to use. So we're looking here at a, a, a sheet, a, a picture out of one of our catalogs, the 4400 catalog, the hydraulic hose catalog of our 487 uh, hydraulic hose. This is a constant working pressure hose. It's a 4000 PSI hose uh, and it, it's uh, got a, uh, the series of fittings that you need to use lifted up, listed off to the side. Uh, so in this case, um, this one uses actually, depending on the size, two different series fittings. So something that we got to consider. Uh, uses the, the 43 series fittings up through the one inch size and then a, above the one inch size, it uses a 77 series fittings. Uh, you will find a column like this pretty much on all hoses telling you what fittings you can use with it. So if you go to a different series of hose, you're gonna find a similar column with uh, a similar information as to what fittings you can use on that hose. So you selected, let's say for example, a 40, 487 hose for your application. This is a 4,000 PSI hydraulic hose. You need to now identify your fittings. The catalog will show you the fittings um, that you need to use. So you go into the catalog now and you go to the 43 series fittings tab and you can start to select the style of fittings, the different connections you may want. So this is just a little glimpse of what's out there. So in this case, we're using both 43 and 77. So you can go to the 43 series portion of the catalog and go through these pages and pick out what type of connections, what sizes you want. Uh, same with the 77 series fittings, the same, same thing there. And you'll find that these, uh, these, you know, some of these series fittings have tons of different options that you can choose from. So uh, if your connections are NPT, JIC, uh, straight thread, O-ring, you know, face seal, uh, seal lock, depending on, on what you need, you can go through here and identify the connections you need and the sizes that you need. Um, again, you know, picking out your hose, uh, making sure it's right for the application is important because it's going to identify the fittings. If you work with somebody from Kundinger, uh, we can help make sure that we try to get you into a series of fittings that allows you to get the type of connections that you want. So depending on the application, we may have some various options for hose, and we want to try to make sure you are going to get the type of connections that you, you want to be able to use for your applications. So let's talk a little bit about the crimper now. We've kind of talked about the hose and, and, and the fittings and identifying some of those Hold on here, I got something popping up. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the, the crimper. So you selected your hoses, you selected your fittings. Um, and, uh, and, and, and now you've got to use that information to decide uh, what crimper, if you don't have a crimper, uh, what crimper you can use. Um, or in the case of if you have a crimper, you need to use that information uh, whether or not that crimper can do 
the crimps you want to do if you're adding, say, a new hose to your, 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 the list you need to make. So uh, each crimper's got certain capabilities, and we need to make sure that they're capable to handle the hose and the fittings that you're doing. Uh, so when you look at the hose catalog near the bottom of the page, it will tell you the makeup of the hose. Um, so this is, uh, if you're looking at a 487 hose, this is going to be near the bottom of the page for that 487. Uh, and you can see uh, that uh, the hose has got a, a, a type of reinforcement. So in this case, it's a two braid steel wire uh, for sizes 4 to 12, uh, four spiral steel wire for sizes 16 to 24, and then a six spiral steel wire for size 32. Uh, so those are important pieces of information when looking at your crimper because uh, the, the crimpers have capabilities up to certain sizes and, 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 uh, and diameters depending on how big their pumps are and all that kind of stuff. So you can see here I've got the carry crimp bench mount uh, crimper shown. And this one has capability of, of crimping two wire hoses up to one and a quarter inch diameter. Uh, and it only goes up to five eighths inch diameter for the four wire hose. So if you wanted to crimp something that's four wire, uh, one inch diameter, uh, this crimper is not going to do it for you. And you need to be paying attention to that to make sure that you're getting good quality crimps uh, on the hoses that you're you're using. So uh, just in a, a a little important piece to remember: if you've got a crimper out there already, and somebody says, "Hey, we need to start crimping." you know, one and a half inch hose or two inch hose or something, you got to make sure your crimper is capable of doing that. Uh, and if you need help identifying that information, please reach out to a Cunninger rep and we'll, we'll be able to help you out. So this is just a, uh, a quick lineup of the various models available for the Parker crimpers. Um, this in no way is all of them. There are a couple of other options not shown. These typically are the ones that we use, sell the most of, uh, that we see most of our customers use. But there is a, a mini crimp on the, the it would be the left side, uh, that is more of a portable handheld unit that, you know, a lot of people driving around in, in trucks to uh, fix uh, vehicles on the road uh, would use. And then there's also a production crimper that uh, can do pretty much anything and everything um, that uh, you don't see there. But these are the ones that we uh, we typically sell, we typically run into, and, and we find most of our customers using. Uh, again, you can find all of this information as to their capabilities um, uh, and all that stuff uh, in the 4400 catalog or on parkerscrimpsource.com. Again, I've got that link as well in the materials section. Uh, Crimpsource is a great way to find out you know, what the crimper capabilities are, what hoses and, and fittings you can crimp on them, uh, and all that stuff. It'll help you identify the dyes and all that stuff as well. So we've identified the hose, we've identified the fittings, uh, and we've now selected a crimper. We've got a crimper selected, so next we need to identify the dyes we need. So depending upon uh, the sizes of hose we need, we may need you know, if we're used, making four different sizes hose, we may need four different dyes, or we would need four different dyes. Uh, so in this example here, uh, we're crimping a 387-4 hose. And if we look in the catalog, we see that 387, just like 487 hose, uses the 43 series fittings. We are also looking for size four, quarter inch. Uh, Parker's dyes are color coded, all series the same to indicate that size. So if you're using 43 series dyes and you need a, a size four, it's gonna be color coded red. Uh, if you're using 77, well in this case 77 doesn't go that small, but if it did, it would be red. Uh, so you'll see there you got a number six is, uh, is yellow in, in color. Uh, for the 43, the 26, the 77, the 25, all of those dyes are gonna be uh, color coded, coded yellow. Uh, so it makes it easy if you are using various different uh, uh, series of fittings and, and you need some different dyes, uh, you can at least know that all the color coding is going to be similar in, uh, or the same for the, the same size. Again, all this information would be found in catalog 4400 or on crimpsource.com. Uh, so uh, 
use those to, to find that information. So in some cases, you may have numerous series of dyes at your facility due to varying applications. You may have both the 43 series and let's say 56 series dyes. Uh, 43 series dyes, uh, uh, 3-ace dye and a 56, 3-ace dye will be similar in size and shape. Uh, so each Parker crimp dye will have a series stamped on the top. Uh, so make sure you're you know, double checking the dye you're using it as it indicates the uh, it will dictate the final crimp spec. So you want to make sure you're using the right series dye with the right hose and fittings. So um, again, I, I point out there, you got right on the top, it'll say 43 uh, and show you uh, what series you're using. So um, make sure that you're checking that uh, if you've got numerous series of dyes uh, in-house. Uh, typically on the crimper, you also find a crimp sticker similar to the label you see on the slide here. Uh, you can use this to determine what crimp dye you need by identifying your hose, the size you want to crimp. Uh, so if you want to crimp 387 hose half inch, uh, I'd be using the blue dye. Uh, that's the part number 80C-A08 uh, there. So uh, you're just going to basically go down the left column there where it says hose. You're going to pick your hose that you're using. So in this case, we're going to say we're using a 387. And we want a number six, so we're gonna or number eight, we're gonna slide over and go up back to the top and see that that gives us the part number for the die. So again, we want to check the part number of the die, check the series of the die, and make sure that everything matches uh, based on this sticker, and that's the die we should be using. On the far right side of the crimp sticker, you also see a column for the die ring. This is a metal ring that sits on top of the die. Uh, once you use you use this uh, die ring, it helps set the depth of the die. So there are two different options. There's a silver and a black. So we need to pay attention to which die, we're, uh, die ring we're using when we're crimping because uh, it will set the, it sets your crimp spec. So um, just be cognizant of the fact that there's going to be two different die rings and some guys, sometimes you're going to be using a silver and sometimes you're going to be using a black depending on what you're crimping on that crimper. All right, so we've identified our hose. Uh, in this case, uh, 387 TC6. Our fitting is uh, 10143-6-6. Uh, we've grabbed our die and our crimper uh, is the carry crimp bench mount, which is capable of doing this uh, crimp. Uh, so it's time to crimp. So what do we do first? What is the first step of this process? The first step is to actually make sure the crimper is in working order and ready to go. Uh, crimp source and again, the catalog are gonna give you some maintenance and care type information. Uh, I've pulled some of that out and put it here, uh, but you wanna check the oil occasionally, make sure sh the oil level is good in the pump. Uh, make sure everything looks like it's in working order, not broken or damaged. Uh, you want to check the crimp bowl for signs of wear or scoring. If it looks real bad, you know, you may not be getting good crimps out of it, so you may need to, to do something there to fix that. Uh, you also want to check the crimp bowl for grease and make sure that you're greasing this regularly. Uh, the dye and the bowl uh, interaction is metal on metal, so we want to keep it greased because if you don't, you're going to be basically damaging the dyes and the bowls. Uh, and, and, you know, you're not going to get the life out of them that you like. So we want to keep that grease. Uh, in this case, you know, they're calling for just uh, uh, a molly grade lithium type grease um, that you use on these. Uh, so if you go through your process of checks and everything looks good at the crimper, then we should be ready to go. So uh, first step in the, uh, in the crimping process is basically the assembly of the hose. Um, I've included in the uh, material section a PDF of these instructions, uh, but the first step is basically cutting the hose. Uh, the second step is going to be inserting it into the crimp fitting, installing the correct die in the die ring, positioning the hose in the crimper, performing the crimp, and then removing the hose and verifying the crimp. 
those are your basic general steps of the crimp process, and we'll kind of touch base on each one of those as we go along here. Cutting the hose. Depending on the hose, there's a right and wrong way to cut it. Anything with a wire inside, you cannot snip or cut or, or crush the hose with a, a crush style cut. Uh, we, uh, we basically tell you, you got to use a saw to cut these. Uh, Parker does have some uh, saw options available uh, to help. Uh, it helps bend the hose in the right spot so that we can get a nice straight cut uh, through the hose. Uh, and you'll see that again in our live demo as well. Um, some of the Parflex hose may not have a wire and you can snip and crush cut that, uh, but you still want to make sure it's a nice straight cut uh, and, and it's a nice uh, uh, flush uh, good cut. Um, always remember when you cut a rubber hose with a saw, it creates a lot of dust and debris. So you want to clean that hose out before you crimp to avoid trapping any of that uh, rubber metal debris in the crimp. So we've got our hose cut correctly. Now it's time to insert the fitting. Uh, the Parker system is uh, of, of crimp fittings is a bite to wire system. And if you look inside the fitting, there are a series of teeth. It is important to get the fitting on all the way as the tooth closest to the connection and of the fitting is important. It, I mean, it hold, it's got a lot of holding power. So you wanna get that hose into that fitting all the way. Uh, Using a method to ensure installing the fitting all the way is important. We at Cunninger use uh, depth insertion blocks uh, to mark our hose. So we'll actually uh, slide the hose on these blocks, use a, a marker to mark that depth uh, uh, that we need. Uh, and that indicates to us that we're getting the, the fitting on all the way when we slide it on. Uh, you can also use basically the end of the fitting, uh, that shoulder where I've kind of got the arrow pointed. As a, as a point where you hold the hose up to and then mark the back end of it where the fitting ends as your spot to where you gotta get the, the, the fitting on all the way. Um, and we'll show you this again in the, uh, in the live demo as well. I hear this a lot uh, going out to customers. They have issues uh, Getting the fitting on all the way onto the hose, uh, it sometimes takes a little muscle. Uh, and Parker does make a machine to help with this, but most just use lubricant to help. Uh, here at Cunninger, we use a water-based lubricant called P80 to help us with this. Uh, it's an approved uh, 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 product from Parker to use on this hose. Uh, you can also use hydraulic oil. Um, you know, you just want to keep it in something that uh, is closed to the environment, like a ketchup bottle or something like that. So you don't collect dust and debris into that oil and then uh, dip your hose in it to, to, to get some lubrication. And you're just basically creating a, a mess there. Um, what you don't want to use is you don't want to use WD-40, don't want to use silicone. Uh, I mean, think of WD-40. I mean, it, that stuff eats rust. Um, so what do you think it's doing to your hose? Uh, so anytime I walk into a customer and I see WD-40 near a crimper, I kind of get a little concerned. Uh, but yeah, just, just stay away from that stuff. Use hydraulic oil. It's made for that. Uh, you know, the hose is made for hydraulic oil or use the P80 type stuff. All right, uh, so now we're gonna prepare the crimper. Um, again, we're gonna double check to make sure the crimper is clean and ready. Uh, we're gonna identify our die and die ring using the crimp sticker. Uh, and we're gonna put that die into the bowl. As long as everything's been greased and everything's uh, good to go clean, put that die into the bowl. Uh, in some, on some machines, you may need to kind of, there's a pin that's holding the, push, the pusher in place. You may need to remove that pin so you can get the die in there. It just depends on the machine you've got, uh, whether or not you're going to need to do that. Uh, and when I when I put the die in the bowl, I always kind of keep the die seam. Uh, you can see that there's a, you know, it's basically uh, got a seam right down the middle here. I kind of keep that seam towards the front in case I need to kind of flip one of those die pieces out to help myself feed an elbow through or something like that. Uh, the die should fit it should sit fairly flat in the bowl. Um, it's going to be a little loose, but it should be intact. It should uh, 
should kind of look like it's 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 meant to be. You don't want one piece kind of sitting up at a weird angle or something. As for the die ring, you can set that aside for now until we get the, the hose fed through. So typically we, or we insert the hose up through the bottom of the die. Uh, you want the fitting to come up through the die and then land on the park line uh, feature that uh, is shown here in the picture up to the right. Uh, there's a little step on the inside of the die that actually that the uh, end of that fitting sits on and kind of holds it in place to where the, the system wants it to be. Uh, this sets the depth of the fitting in the die and gives us the best crimp. So we want that uh, that fitting to sit on that park align feature. Um, we should be able to show this uh, in the demo. We'll, we'll kind of uh, open up that die and we'll show that that uh, little park line feature there. Uh, so we'll get a little bit better view of that. Um, if the fitting does fall below that park line feature and you do crimp, you will end up crushing that the bottom portion of that fitting and you will have not a very good crimp. Actually, you'll be damaging the hose, crushing the wires. Um, and again, like I said before, if you, you know, you, you might need to kind of remove a couple of those pie pieces of the die. They're all kind of tied together, but you can lift a little bit out to, to, to feed an elbow through. And I think we'll try to show you that as, as well when we, when we get to the live demo. Once you've got the hose fed through, you can set the die ring on top. And now we're kind of ready to, to, to crimp. So uh, if necessary, uh, you may have to pin that pusher back into place, depending on your the model of crimper you're using. And uh, once you've got that done, you're, you're ready to activate the pump and begin your crimp cycle. Uh, once you start that, uh, you want to make sure the pusher bottoms out in the die ring to assure proper crimp diameter. So you want to make sure that pusher plate comes all the way down and pushes on that crimp die ring and uh, gives you uh, the best, uh, the, the good crimp. Uh, once you're done, you can reverse that pusher back up to the top and, uh, and you can remove your, your hose. Uh, typically, again, you may need to pull the pin on that, that pusher plate. Uh, and you may need to remove the die ring and, and feed that hose back down through the bottom to get it out of there. So next step is to check our work. Um, it's, uh, it's very important uh, to, to check to make sure things were done right. Uh, so first step is to visually inspect for any glaring issues. If you see any uh, extruded, largely extruded metal, maybe on the ridges in between the, the die pieces, uh, you may have done something wrong. Uh, if you see cracks uh, in the fitting, uh, or if your insertion depth line is showing way below the fitting, you may not have gotten the fitting on all the way. Um, there's a, a bunch of different things that could go wrong in the die process. We need to verify that uh, that we're, uh, you know, it looks right. It looks good. Um, if all looks good, then measure your crimp diameter using the caliper. Uh, again, on that uh, crimp sticker, there's going to be the specifications that you need to fall within. So if you're using a 387 hose number six and you go over and you've got the die there, it tells you what die to use. Uh, right below that, it's going to show you the uh, upper and lower uh, specifications that you need to be within. Uh, so we want you to measure that that crimp diameter on the flat sections uh, or the smooth sections of the uh, of the crimp, uh, and just make sure you're falling into that that specification. Uh, if your hose is within spec, um, then we suggest you clean out your hose and you're ready to go install. Uh, if it's not within spec, um, we don't suggest you ever try to recrimp. Let's say it's a little larger. Uh, it's best to just start over because something did not go right. You don't know what it is. You don't want to damage the hose uh, or anything like that. So we just suggest cut a new piece of hose, uh, grab your fittings and start over and maybe do a little, you know, what, what, what wrong? What, what did I do wrong in that last time? So, uh, but don't try to recrimp or anything like that.
So if it doesn't come out to spec, uh, what are the potential causes? Um, typically what we see are the wrong die was used, whether it's a series or a size. Uh, a lot of times the black or the wrong die ring was used, uh, whether it's black or silver, they may have grabbed the wrong one. Uh, or they grabbed the wrong fitting and didn't realize it. And then they had the right die for the hose and they thought they had the right fitting uh, and, they, and it, it wasn't the right fitting. Uh, or their insertion depth is not correct. Uh, and this is actually probably one of the more popular ones that we see is, is people just get a little bit complacent. They don't mark that hose. They don't get the fitting on all the way. And then, uh, and then we have issues in the field with uh, insertion depth. Uh, I've also included a link to a blog by Parker for the top eight reasons uh, for hose failures. Uh, and as you can see, uh, reasons five and six are basically got to do with the assembly of the hose. Uh, so, you know, a, a hose blowing, whether it's on a mobile device or a machine, it's a mess. It can create downtime um, and also can be very dangerous. So uh, trying to take care of making sure that you're doing, you know, some of this stuff right is very important. It'll save your, your company time and money and, and maybe an injury as well. So uh, do your due diligence, make sure you're doing it correct. All right. That is all we've got for today. Uh, so uh, one last ask, are there any questions? All right, um, you will be receiving a follow-up email and it's gonna have uh, basically a couple of questions for evaluation uh, quickly. So if you could just answer those and return that back to us, that'd be great. Uh, other than that, um, I'd like to thank you for attending today. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, and uh, if uh, there's anything else we can help with, let us know. Thanks a lot.